The simplest thing in the world, a short story. All right, he said. That's about enough now, isn't it? You've been at it longer than a minute, and you said you'd start. The door was open, and he looked into the bedroom. Kitty sat there at a table, playing solitaire. Her face looked as if she were very successful at making it look as if everything were all right. She had a lovely mouth. You could always tell things about people by their mouth. Hers looked as if she wanted to smile at the world, and if she didn't, it was her own fault. And she really would, in a moment, because she was all right, and so was the world. In the lamplight, her neck looked white and very thin, bent attentively over the cards. It didn't cost any money to play solitaire. He heard the cards thumping down gently, and the steam crackling in the pipe in the corner. The doorbell rang, and Kitty came in quickly to open the door, not looking at him. Her body tight and purposeful under the childish white skirted print dress, a very lovely dress, only it had been bought two years ago and for summer wear. He could have opened the door, but he knew why she wanted to open it. He stood, his feet planted wide apart, his stomach drawn, not looking at the door, listening. He heard the voice, and then he heard Kitty saying, no, I'm sorry, but we really don't need an electro lux. Kitty's voice was almost a song of release, as if she were making an effort not to sound too foolish, as if she loved the electro lux man and wished she could ask him in to visit. He knew why Kitty's voice sounded like that. She had thought it was the landlord. Kitty closed the door and looked at him crossing the room and smiled as if she were apologizing humbly and happily for her existence and said, I don't want to interrupt you, dear, and went back to her solitaire. All you have to do, he said to himself, is think of Florette Lam and try to imagine what she likes. Just imagine that and then write it down. That's all there is to it, and you will have a good commercial story that will sell immediately and make you a lot of money. It's the simplest thing in the world. You can't be the only one who's right and everybody else wrong, he said. Everybody's told you that that's what you must do. You've asked for a job and nobody would give you one. Nobody would help you find one. Nobody had even seemed interested or serious about it. They said, a brilliant young man like you? Look at Paul Patterson, they said. 80,000 a year and not half your brain. But Paul knows what the public likes to read and gives it to them. If you'd just stop being so stubborn, they said. You don't have to be intellectual all the time. Why not be practical for a while? And then after you've made your first $50,000, you can sit back and indulge yourself in some more high literature, which you will never sell. They said, that why waste your time on a job? What can you do? You'll be lucky if you get 25 a week. It's foolish when you've got a great talent for words. You know you have if you'd only be sensible about it. It ought to be easy for you if you can write fancy. Difficult stuff like that. It ought to be a chintzy to toss off a popular serial or two. Any fool can do it, they said. Stop dramatizing yourself. Do you enjoy being a martyr? They said, look at your wife. They said, if Paul Patterson can do it, why can't you? Think of Florid Lum, he said to himself, sitting down at his desk. You imagine that you can't understand her. But you can if you want to. Don't try to be so complicated. Be simple. She's simple to understand. That's it. Be simple about everything. 
just write a simple story. The simplest, most unimportant story you can imagine. For God's sake, can't you think of anything that's not important, not important at all, not of the slightest possible importance? Can't you? Are you as good as that, you conceited fool? Do you really think you are as good as that? That you can't do anything unless it's great, profound, important? Do you have to be a world saver all the time? Do you have to be a damn John Dark? Stop kidding yourself. He said, you can. You are no better than anyone else. He chuckled. That's the kind of rotter you are. People tell themselves they are no worse than anyone else when they need courage. You tell yourself you are no better. I wish you'd tell me where you got that infernal conceit of yours. That's all it is. Not any great talent. Not any brilliant mind. Just conceit. You are not a noble martyr to your art. You are an inflated egotist, and you are getting just what you deserve. Good, are you? What makes you think you are good? What right have you to hate what you are going to do? You haven't written anything for months. You couldn't. You can't write anymore. You never will again. And if you can write what you want to write, what business have you to despise the things people want you to write? That's all you are good for anyway. Not for any great epics with immortal messages. And you ought to be damn glad to try and do it. Not sit here like a convict in a death cell waiting for his picture to be taken for the front pages. Now that's better. I think you have the right spirit now. Now you can start.